Well, during Tuesday's Bradfield oration just yesterday, leaders of both the major parties in New South Wales were given the opportunity to lay out their vision for the future of the state. As Premier Dominic Perrottet focused his pitch on the state's education sector, the opposition leader Chris Mintz chose to draw battle lines through the middle of the city, perhaps. He pointed to disproportionate housing and public transport infrastructure for Western Sydney. It does signal that Labor intends to campaign for key Western Sydney seats, but let's get to it now. We'll confirm it perhaps with Chris Minns. He joins us live now, the New South Wales Opposition Leader. Uh, good to see you. Look, it's always great to get a, um, a, a more uh, forthright, longer-term vision. You know, politicians often get accused of um, short-term politics and day-to-day -day things, but we got the vision from both of you yesterday. I'm interested in this housing plan because I reckon it's on everyone's minds, uh, not just in New South Wales at the mm. moment, but right around the country as we can see the cost of everything. Um, let's talk about where you want to build new houses. Where are you going to release this public land in the east and the north for public housing? Well, there is a lot of land, Laura, on public transport corridors. Both the opposition and the government have identified that land. The government's currently holding it in the transport asset holding entity. And there is a proposal to release part of it to increase the supply of housing for New South Wales, and in particular, supply affordable housing as well as key worker housing for teachers and nurses closer to city infrastructure and transport infrastructure. Mm. Now, the government's plan would see hotels built on a lot of those proposals and lots. New South Wales Labor want to make sure we increase the supply of housing, particularly close to the okay. eastern seaboard. Where are those areas? So where does the current government want to build these hotels in the east and, and north shore where you want to build housing? Can you identify the exact areas? Yeah, they're often abutted to transport corridors. In some cases, they're the airspace above transport corridors. In many cases, they're lands adjacent to the existing transport infrastructure in New South Wales. You see jurisdictions around the world, particularly transport for London, which has got a big property arm that in fact builds and develops on transport corridors in London as a key source of housing supply for sure. that organisation, that community and that city in London. We can do the same in New South Wales. And indeed, the government has already identified options and opportunities to do that. We'd like to see it transferred and made more available for key worker housing and affordable housing yeah. in Sydney. I'm just trying to work out exactly where these areas are, though, because yesterday in your speech you talked about Mossman, Lake I'll, I'll Cove, give you, No, I'll give you an example. OK, thank you. No, absolutely. So Crow's Nest is a great example. Crow's Nest Station, above that was a 24-storey uh, tower or building was proposed to be put on top of the metro station for the North West Metro. It was a key part of the compact that really provided the financing for that key piece of transport infrastructure. Mm. The New South Wales government knocked that proposal off and as a result 24 storeys of supply for the Sydney housing market was taken off the agenda and as a result I think everyone needs to draw our, all of our attention to the fact that there's a net sum gain here. If you don't build closer to the city and keep pieces of transport infrastructure, it will go west. So you're seeing Parramatta with an increase of 127,000 people, Blacktown mm. 110,000, The Hills 100,000, Camden 80,000, whereas areas closer to the city where most of the transport infrastructure is being built have got paltry sums and paltry increases. OK, so when you're talking about more social housing, though, and you uh, say uh, it wasn't just Lane Co Co Clove, uh, Cove, it was uh, Crow's Nest, Wallara, as I mentioned... Are you talking about uh, apartments? So if you want social, affordable housing close to the city now, is it really just apartments? Absolutely. Of course we need to build apartments closer yeah, but to it's the not, city. But we're talking about families to key transport and infrastructure. not giving up on that, you know, great Australian dream of owning a home. But are you now saying, you know, if the New South Wales under your leadership is going to build more social housing, you're going to have to get used to the idea of families living in apartments? Look, as part of the housing mix, of course, apartments need to be part of the housing mix for New South Wales. This is particularly important in terms of intergenerational equity. Mm. The average apartment price has doubled in the last 10 years, which means young people can't get their feet on the housing ladder and in many cases can't even rent a slice of Sydney. And as a result, 
when it comes to teachers and nurses and police officers and paramedics, they're not able to live and work in Sydney. And if they are, it's, it's normally on the western fringe of Sydney. And as a result, hours from uh, employment centres as well as public transport infrastructure. My yeah. argument, I don't think it's that outrageous, is to say it needs to be rebalanced. I mean, the government sure. attacked Labor for suggesting more infill closer to the city yesterday. Mm. I think that's a little bit like the mayor of New York City saying we're not going to have any new buildings in Manhattan. Of course you can have urban density in a city like Sydney, and sure. I'd argue that it's essential.